Hey guys, it's Bobby. Today we're going to start a new children's church lesson. It's called Bible Treasure Hunt. And today, before we get started, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for all the children who are watching today and wanting to learn more about you and your son, Jesus. Dear Lord, I pray that you will just Teach them what they need to hear through me. And dear Lord, help us get back to your house. In thy name we pray, amen. Okay, guys, today, like I said, we're going to talk about Bible treasure hunt. And when, we, when you hunt treasure, you need to realize you've got to do the first thing first. And that's our lesson today, the first thing step to God's blessings is following his word, okay? But we're going to give you a little background. In 1922, explorers who were digging in Egypt found a lost tomb. And it was a lost tomb of a famous king and his name was King Tut. Tut's tomb was filled with incredible treasures including a coffin made out of solid gold. Can you believe that? And in addition, it was all the gold that he had uh, stored up over all these years was in the tomb with him. Did you know who the first person to marvel at this tomb was? It was the boy king, King Tut himself. And like so many other kings in the ancient world, Tut collected as much gold and treasure as he could. And when King Tut died, his people buried his treasure with him, thinking he could take it with him to the afterlife. But you know, and I know that, King's, that King Tut's treasures never went anywhere. They stayed in the ground buried beneath the sand for all these thousands and thousands of years. It's easy to judge poor King Tut and say that he ch chased after the wrong thing, but how many people today are doing the same thing? Look at the beautiful houses, the expensive cars, the sparkling jewelry that people covet. Athletes, entertainers, businessmen, and women all pursue gold and treasures today, just as much as King Tut and his forefathers did. But at the end of their lives, all the houses, the cars, the boats, the private resort islands, and all of that will stay here. It will be passed on to relatives, a friend, or put up for auction, but it will never go with you when you die. There's nothing bad or evil about having nice things, but when we base all of our happiness on things and stuff, we're leading an empty life. That's why so many wealthy people who seem to have it all are really unhappy and miserable. They went after things that they thought would make them happy. They don't realize that the treasures that is eternal, uh, that will last beyond a life, treasure more valuable than gold or any possession, best of all, it's a treasure more uh, it's a treasure that we all can have right now. We don't have to go digging in the desert to find it. Listen to what the Bible says. And Pastor Jamie is going to come read this scripture to us. Hey y'all. Our scripture this morning is found in Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 34. Do not lay up your treasures on earth where moth 
and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay your treasures up in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light is in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about, what your, uh, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? And which of you can be, which of you by being anxious can add one single hour to the span of his life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Jesus is the greatest treasure any of us can find. He is the Son of God who came to die for our sins. Because Jesus died and rose again, we can have eternal life. That's not all. Jesus gives, uh, not, that's not all that Jesus gives us. He gives us himself so that we can have a personal relationship with him. God is our creator. He loves us more than any person ever loved another. He can provide everything that we need. Why on earth would we seek after treasures that aren't eternal and can never love you back when you could have Jesus living in your heart? Jesus doesn't tell us to seek just seek God's kingdom. He compels us to chase after him. First, he says that where your treasure is, there your heart will be. If money and power are your treasure, they will become your God. That means those things will become more important to you than anything else than your family, than your, uh, your friends, or even God himself. And one day, all that money and that wealth will be taken away from you. What then? What will you do when your God, little God, is taken away and cannot help you? The Bible tells us that nothing can separate us from the love of God. 
No power on earth can take away salvation Jesus, that Jesus gives us. Jesus is a treasure that is eternal. And once we receive it, nobody can ever take it away from us. Jesus also tells us not to worry about material things, what to eat and what to drink and what to wear and where we shall sleep. And we talked about that last week when we talked about fear. That doesn't mean that Jesus will make us rich or wealthy. God isn't Santa Claus and he's not going to give us what we think we want. That's also, uh, that also does not let us off the hook from working hard and earning a living. Working hard is part of life that God honors. When Jesus says to seek God first, he wants us to know that when we put Christ first, he will provide for the things that we need. There's no harm in enjoying life and the good things of this world has to offer, but God doesn't want us to love the worldly things to come before our love of Jesus. Jesus is the greatest treasure we can ever receive and the only treasure we can take with us from this life. If treasure is what you seek, then seek first after Jesus. Ask Jesus into your heart and stake your claim into one treasure that even death cannot take away. Guys, thank you for coming back and watching me today uh, do this lesson. And we will be back next week to continue our Bible treasure hunt series. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that you learn about treasure and the treasure of this life is the, on, the only treasure from this life that we can take with us to heaven is Jesus. Let's pray. Dear God, teach us to follow you and put you first in all things. In Jesus' name, amen.